So as you guys can clearly tell, um, I'm just watching the, uh, <coughs> the Violet Hill, sorry about that, music video, and I'm kind of getting inspiration for, like, a skit idea, um, obviously watching this video, clearly it's cold here in Michigan, and I don't know if I want to do that, um, oh, oh, no, <laughs> well, I don't think I'm going to be copying in too much, but I do have the B-roll footage from the Bonnie Bear review. So how about let's just change it around a little bit and make it seem like it's different and put a 10 on it. I think that's a good idea. Hey guys, Channel BK. Thank you for tuning in as always. Brian here. Classics week is chugging along and we are going to talk about Coldplay's Viva La Vida or Death and all his friends. Coldplay is a famed alt rock and pop group from the UK and this is their fourth studio album but this being their fourth studio album is sort of a major important piece to my intro which then I will talk about this album. So let me tell you why that's so important. Obviously Coldplay sort of blew up around the time Radiohead was sort of splitting off and doing their own thing with Coldplay sort of stepping in as sort of that alt rock sound. Obviously something like Parachutes, great album. We get to something like A Rush of Blood in the Head, which is my personal favorite of theirs, which is kind of a joke because it's the like obvious Coldplay album. It's like piano heavy, ballad heavy, like this is sort of Coldplay in that era. But then we get to X and Y which is a super experimental album. And it has these sort of like arena rock, like big stadium sounds. Again, very experimental. This was an album that grew on me a lot. Square One, Fix You, like some of my favorite Coldplay songs are on this record. But to sort of skip past the record I'm about to talk about, we get to something then like Milo Ziloto or, you know, the rest of the albums that they've done sort of after the fact. And they kind of went into a more pop-centric avenue, you know, messing with more 808s, some more colorful production, or maybe some somber production. But I really feel like this album, Viva La Vida, being the fourth album, sort of being in the middle, is very apparent to sort of Coldplay before and Coldplay now, or after rather. And I think this is probably their most important record, mainly because of just the record itself, but also what it did for the band. Because not only was it sort of this brilliant merging of sort of what they've been known for to sort of what we would hear later down the road. I think that this is their most complete record. I think this is their most consistent record. And I think that this is probably Coldplay at their finest when it comes to just being well known for being Coldplay. I think this is sort of the record that I would show somebody if they're like, what do you think of Coldplay? Like, what is their sound? This is what I'd bring them to. And also, this is the first time that people, legends, such as Brian Eno and John Hopkins, sort of jumped on to help produce the record as well, because this record has a completely different feel than sort of the old school alt rock feel. Why did I just say old school? Whatever. But it has, you know, heavy emphasis on strings and interesting percussion. There are pianos, as always, as Coldplay does, but they're a little bit more stripped back in certain songs in certain areas because this record is more of the kind of like an art rock style, and I think it lingers across this whole entire album. Even though there's different sort of places they go with it in different styles, it still all fits brilliantly because I think the flow of this record is also just like pitch perfect. And also the other major thing about this record is sort of the loose kind of concept about the French Revolution. And yes, I, you know, there are moments on here that bring that up, but there's also kind of modern aspects when it comes to sort of stuff like that as well in terms of lyrics. But also that's another big thing about this record is I think this is probably like the best Coldplay record in terms of lyrics. Like I think this, they were just so on the nose. I think Chris Martin sounds as good as ever, as great as ever on this record. I just, his boyish sort of charm and his vocal delivery on here just swoons over and I think it fits quite elegantly amongst all these tracks. But again, like when it comes to sort of the diversity of this record, yes, we get something like 42, which sort of opens with these very sombering kind of Coldplay keys, you know, with Chris just swooning over it. But then the song builds and builds with some luscious strings and then some really hard hitting drums and some kind of distorty, hard riffing guitars near the second half of the track. Or something like the big single from this album, Viva La Vida, which 
has like such a minimal just like 808 kind of beat to it that's what it sounds like or just like a minimal kind of bass drum beat but there's more like bells and these again like the strings come up beautifully as well rather than sort of what we know Coldplay doing so well but again like there's other tracks on here that do that really well like something like Cemeteries of London which is one of my favorite tracks on this entire album it's one of the most like sombering things that they built like I love sort of the build up in this it's haunting again classic Coldplay keys are over this. I love the way they twinkle on it. I love sort of the ambiance of this track as well. And then it builds into like these rocking drums. And as the band sort of said, they try to do kind of like a Spanish flamenco like clapping. But again, it sounds very much like it's, it's not so much like that. It fits the song, but like that's sort of their interpretation of why they did the claps. And there's a lot of clapping sort of added to the percussion on a lot of these tracks too on this album. And I also think the guitars on this track are phenomenal too. I love sort of the mixture of the like kind of, you know, the soaring electric guitars. And then I think like kind of, you know, the acoustic that drives the song too is also very great. My two favorite tracks when it comes to sort of the actual production and the composition of this album is something like Lovers in Japan slash Reign of Love and Violet Hill, which Lovers in Japan is like the first half of the track, which is Lovers in Japan, is this just like dreamy atmosphere. Like I just love how they like sort of take that culture in Japan because the song definitely pulls a lot of that sort of instrumentation, but it does it in a nice and classy way. I think the drums are, you know, very simple for what it needs to do. It's sort of like a marching drum to it. I think the pianos are so upbeat and fun. And I think Chris just sings beautifully over this track and he sounds like he's having a lot of fun with it. And then Rain of Love, which is the second half of this, you know, two part track, which is absolutely stunning. It is so beautiful. I think these are also sort of like my favorite pianos that they have on the entire album and Chris's vocals just swooning on it. I think this is also his best performance too. I just love sort of how he reaches for those high notes and just you could feel all that emotion coming out of his voice. And then Violet Hill which again starts very dreamy. It has probably the best mixture of what this album does with sort of the hard guitars, the driving drums, but it has sort of this elegant feel too when it comes to the percussion as well. But this is also probably my favorite track on the album mainly because of the message because it's like this protest song. I love the imagery Chris paints. I love his lyrics on here sort of talking about the idea of the upper class, the middle class, and the lower class, and sort of how the upper class is sort of in their own little bubble and don't have to kind of deal with as much while the poor and all of them are suffering, and he kind of hates that comparison. He calls out Fox News on here, like with some lines, he calls out conservatives. He kind of compares all of this really great imagery, and it's like weird to hear this type of song from Coldplay, but again, they do it in such a beautiful way. And again, like all the themes of war on this track as well, which obviously... There's stuff like that throughout this entire record as well, but it's very apparent on this track specifically. And then I'd say like probably two of the most straightforward tracks on here are also tracks that I love so much. The second to last track, Strawberry Swing, which has sort of this rocking beat. Like I love the tempo to this track. Like the tempo on this is so perfect. Again, it's nice. It's light. It has this great feel to it. I love the sentiment of Chris's lyrics on here, sort of talking about the idea of a perfect day and how it's not even a perfect day because it can't be one without you at my side. I love those beautiful lyrics. And then something like Lost, which have these epic, epic organs. And again, the percussion on this song is so great. They do such a great job sort of switching up the percussion on this album to sort of make it feel like sort of a marching band in war like it has such a great feel to it and again like I love Chris's first verse about how he's sort of going on to the end of each stanza about like you know being lost and not knowing what to do and then he sort of throws it back to the listener saying like maybe you are in this place as well and the whole big fish in a little pond and all the imagery on this track is so lovely. And then, obviously, Death and All His Friends, which is the final track, which, again, starts off very somberly. It has these great pianos, but they're uplifting. There's a hope to them. And then, guitars are sort of added. There's a build. Percussion comes in. It builds big. And then, sort of, the rest of the track is sort of what the intro track was, Life in Technicolor, which is, in my opinion, which 
Wait a minute, shit, I completely even forgot to talk about that track to open this entire album. I thought this was such a colorful way to sort of set the tone for the record. Shit, how did I forget to talk about that, like, straight from the jump? We're gonna just leave this in here. I don't give a shit. But it sort of goes back to that lavish instrumentation that opened it. And then again, this track, I love sort of Chris's sentiment of not trying to fall back into the plights of humanity in terms of like war and violence and all that and he's trying to look for a way out and he doesn't want to repeat the cycle and I love how he's just chanting it at the end with everyone in the band like I think it's such a great sentiment and again oh and also like I, I feel like I could have easily just brought this up in the review but I completely forgot about it but how these are probably the most vulnerable like vocal deliveries that Chris has on the record too which I find very kind of you know beautiful and amazing and i think that's such a great way for him to sing on this last track and specifically with the mood of it too this record has a lot of great concepts of love and loss and being stuck in a rut and sort of not falling into the trappings of the old world and sort of fighting back and having a voice and sort of the idea of living with your memories and death and sadness and sort of holding that all in it's again such a beautiful record and it's funny because with the concept being what it is sure it's brought up a lot in the instrumentation and it's a lot brought up in the composition and the lyrics but it's not like so heavily based in that theme but at the same time, it works so wonderfully with a lot of what Chris is singing about, about fighting back and not standing down and all of sort of this destruction and the sadness and trying to get out of that cycle. Like, I, I just, I don't know. And then like, even listening to Viva La Vida again, like just that being such a big song with all the imagery he writes on that track too, it's unbelievable how great this album is, honestly. And I think this is always gonna be a sentiment of the band with everything surrounding it and i think it is such a great middle point to the band and i definitely 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 think that in terms of how they got an album together it was 10 tracks it was under 50 minutes it was to a point where they didn't go too long with a lot of it they got it straight narrow in this package to be honest up until this point the one track i was still always on the fence with was yes I was kind of thrown off with the percussion on that, but I grew to love it. And especially the Chinese sleep chant, the last kind of two, two and a half minutes on here are, again, some of the most dreamlike and beautiful things, song, compo everything that Coldplay has done. Also, another thing I forgot to mention because I was talking about how um, this song kind of grew on me. I love how dramatic it is. Uh, the... Um, the strings that are in it like it's so like over the top like do, 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 do. so that was another thing that i wanted to mention with this track and i'm just mumbling at this point because i think this record is so lovely and so fabulous so if you've listened to this record tell me what you think in the comments below if you haven't please go listen to it and tell me same opinions if you like please like please subscribe for more videos funness we're going to be ending off classics reviews tomorrow i'm very excited and i'm excited to have been doing this again as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for tuning in to Channel BK. Peace out, guys.